the program sir okay sir okay sir So welcome, Dr. M. S. Murugan sir. Thank you for joining with us, sir. Murugan sir, welcome. Ah, uh, Murugan sir. Hi. Ah, yeah. Sir, are you blah? Sir, super nice, sir. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Audible, sir. Okay, okay. Audible, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mohit, sir. Uh, Mohit, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, thank sir. Welcome. Very good morning, sir. Yeah, very good morning, sir. Ah uh, yes, sir. Thank you for joining with us, sir. Ah uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. You are ready. Yeah, it's my pleasure, sir. Thank you. Sir. Sir, Saranan, sir. Ah, oh, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Dean, sir, will join them very shortly. Yeah, no problem. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, Dr. Saravanan, I am online only, uh, just for information. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We know this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
good morning participants uh, the program will uh, start very uh, within few minutes kindly stay with us Welcome, Dean Sir. Good morning, Dean Sir. Good morning, Sir. Yes, Madam. Go ahead, Madam. Shall we start, Sir? Yes, sir, please. Good morning to all and all present here. I welcome you all for this seven days FTP on advanced computational and experimental research in physics. Our SRM Institute of Science and Technology is one of the top ranking universities in India. with over 20000 students and 1500 faculty offering a wide range of undergraduate postgraduate and doctoral programs in engineering management medicine and health sciences and science and humanities foreign faculty and flexible and dynamic curriculum exciting research and global connections are the features of features that set srm apart srm ist have collaborations with the leading foreign universities like mit Melon, UC Davis, Warwick, and Western Australia. Our SRM IST has been accredited by NAC with highest A plus plus grade. Now we stand for invocation. Tamil Thai Warthu. ും <laughs> ുംബമുറങ്ങേ <laughs> thank you all in the right light at the right time everything is extraordinary it is the right time for digital lightning of lamp Now I request our HOD in charge, 
Dr. M. Saranen, Assistant. Madam, you are muted. Madam, you are muted, madam. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Now I request our HOD in charge, Dr. M. Saravanan, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramapuram Campus, to give the welcome address to the gathering. Sir. Thank you, madam. Yes. Respect the Chief Guest, Dr. B. Bengatraman, sir. Director, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakam, Tamil Nadu. Respect the Dean, sir. And Vice Principal Academic, sir and faculty members of various departments and uh, participants from various institutions. We are very good morning to under present here. It is my privilege to give the welcome address to Samisa Gathering. On behalf of SRM in Department of Physics, SRM of Science and Technology, Rambara Campus, Chennai, I first welcome Dr. P. Venkatraman, sir, Director, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakum, Tamil Nadu, for this one-week online national-level faculty program on advanced computational and experimental research in physics, uh, to grace the occasion as a chief guest and deliver the keynote address, I welcome you once again, sir. Next, I welcome our most expected dean, sir, for giving presentation address in this one week MTP. Thank you for your valuable support and joining with us, sir. I also welcome our vice principal academic, sir, to give the felicitation address on this occasion. I once again welcome the faculties from various departments, participants from various institutions across India to this one week online national level faculty development program on advanced computational and experimental research in physics. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I invite our VP academic, sir, SRM IST Ramaburam campus to felicitate the gathering, sir. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, honorable uh, chief guest for today's program, Dr. P. Venkatraman, a director, IGKAR Kalpakam, a uh, respected dean, uh, ENT, Dr. M. Murali Krishna, uh, uh, and, uh, and HODs, professors, faculty members, and uh, uh, good to note that a good number of participants, one of the participants across the nation who are registered for this program. Very good morning to one and all. Like, indeed, it's actually a mandate that there need to uh, show uh, significant progress in development in various dimensions. Especially, I strongly believe that the Department of Physics quite always plays a vital role in bringing up a newer materials which have an edge over than the existing materials by various means in terms of the characteristics or in terms of properties like mechanic properties and other kind of properties like. So naturally to bring up that is not so easy that unless otherwise the newer material being tested for the suitability for the application for which it is intended to. If that is the case, of course, we know that various means to research to validate its uh, conformity. Normally, like through three theoretical model, actually, generally many used to do, whereas computational model is slightly tougher, which takes into account the complexity of the problem being formulated and uh, bringing in the various influencing parameters with the combined effect of various influencing parameters which are contradicted in nature also like so in that is the case and is, uh, this complexity increases and which could be able to solve by computational methods which will be more predictive than the theoretical method so in this view, it is very happy to note that the Department of Physics is organizing a one week FDP, especially on advanced computational and experimental research, especially in physics, mainly to bring out newer materials, which the society is demanding at large for various applications, both in terms of the characteristics, properties, and also cost effective. 
and i strongly believe this this one week uh, i mean ftp uh, actually i'm um, fully packed with eminent speakers from various reputed organizations will definitely get deep insight about uh, these computation methods and uh, various technologies where the participants will have a ample opportunity to have lot amount of take away further work on it along with the research and come up with fruitful outcomes with these few words i wish this one week one week program a grand success in all ways and means and once again thank the organizers for giving this wonderful opportunity to be a part of this inaugural program thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir for your informative speech now i invite our respected dean ent sir srm isc ramaburam campus to give the presidential address to the gathering sir Uh, sir, Dean, sir, please, sir, uh, please unmute yourself, sir. Yes. Honorable uh, Chief Guest and the most eligible person to talk about the today's program, Dr. Balasubramanyam, Ankitraman, sir, Director, IJ Kar Kalpakam, Tamil Nadu, and our beloved Vice Principal, sir, Dr. Prabhakaran, sir, and the convener and the head of the department. Dr. M. Saravanan, sir, the faculty members, research scholars, and the participants. Participants, uh, very good morning to everybody present here. At the outset, we are appreciating the Department of uh, Physics uh, for conducting a one-week online national-level faculty development program on advanced advanced computational and experimental research in physics. So. the title is uh, two aspects in this one is uh, computational physics the other one is uh, experimental experimental research in the physics in these two categories if you compare it the computational physics means generally what do you say whatever it is a, a study of implementation of a, what do you say numerical analysis to solve the problem in a physics whether it is in a quantitative or qualitative manner in fact the physics is the major portion actually the engineering is a part of a physics i used to say because the entire the world is with the physics a part of a physics have been converted into engineering technologies as our vice principal said about the new materials whatever it may be it may be any form and all it is a part of a physics i'll appreciate the department for taking this one and similar way other portion of this one is an experimental research so the new areas in this experimental research in a physics may be including you take about a, an astrophysics and nano sciences energy systems biophysics microfluids microsystems optical physics quantum information sciences these are the advanced versions and all if you take an approach in the uh, the western countries where the physics has given lot of importance a lot of research will be going on in physics laboratories the most of the nobel prize winners are all, may not be that much from the engineering side they are all basically from the physics so whatever their invention will be taken a part of a application of that invention will be in the form of an engineer in that in that uh, contest the those who are actually belongs to physics uh, background and all they are in the highest side in compare with engineering even then end utilizers are engineers but the basic which is actually the content the development at the research level is from the physics i will appreciate the department for getting an eminent persons like uh, when i gone through this one dr ms manirajan sir dr muttu se senthil pandian uh, 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 dr s yes, uh, arun mehta then dr sankaran dr meher abhinav dr mohit sharma and uh, thanks to the technology that uh, because in you are able to get the the expertise from the world uh, entire world in a single platform so that this will be quite useful for the faculty for research scholars and as well as the the participants see the in terms of faculty always the faculty has to update whatever you studied during the days in the bsc physics msc physics it has been advanced so you have to be 
competitive with the engineers means uh, these are the advanced versions until unless you attend like this fdb programs then only you can enhance your technologies the similar way for research scholars there is quite good number in the physics department for them to find out the area to find out any problem these types of uh, fdbs will be very very important once again i am very much thankful to the beloved chief guest today uh, dr balsubanam megatraman sir i happen to gone through your bio data uh, it is a very splendid sir and in spite of your busy schedule today you are here and i am very very much uh, happy sir to share about your uh, today addressing you have been expertise in this ndt testing and nde technologies and uh, we are very fortunate to have your presence today sir uh, once again i am wishing you all the best for this uh, the end of us for this particular program thank you one and all for giving this wonderful opportunity thank you thank, thank you, you sir thank you thank you sir for your thank you sir for your motivational speech now i request dr m saravanan hod in charge department of physics to introduce our chief guest in this great occasion i am very much happy to introduce our honorable chief guest dr bala subramani venkatraman sir Dr. Balasubhram Venkatraman sir has completed post post graduate in physics from Saint Joseph College, Trichapalli, and PhD in Madras University. Sir has joined the 27th batch of Bar Training School at Mumbai, and on successful completion, sir has joined the Radio Metallurgy Laboratory, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kolkata, in 1984. With a research career spanning 37 years. Sir has combined the physics of non-destructive evaluation with engineering and technology, and consistently provided excellent R&D support and robust NDE-based solutions to technologically challenging problems in the nuclear and other strategic and core industries. His significant milestone activities for the nuclear industry include procedures for X-ray and neutron radiography of highly irradiated fuel pins. comprehensive nde for evaluation of tube to tube sheet wells of pfp or steam generator and radiometric testing of shielding structures sir has been primarily responsible for establishing the conventional and digital x ray neutron radiography and thermal imaging facilities at indira gandhi center for atomic research kolkata sir was a part of the da team to review the qa aspects of kk npp 1 and 2 for the start uh, strategic industries the significant activities in which he had been associated include standardizing multi nde techniques for evaluation and life extension of tail rotor blades of mi8 and mi17 defense helicopters training of over 100 iaf personnel in nde and review of qa the welding procedures and the nde methods during the fabrication of rocket motor causing using dmr 1700 alloy His expertise had also been utilized by Indian Space Research Organization (ISRO) for solving challenging NDE problems pertaining to the initial PSLV and the GSLV, to qualifications of titanium 6 Al 4 volt alloy starlight gas bottles, and edge sensors of Insat. He developed the neutron radiography procedure for examination of pyro devices using Comney reactor. As a physicist, he has focused on applied R&D in the area of NDE. for materials evaluation and characterization and related to radiation sciences and technology and also infrared thermography sir has pioneered the application of ir thermography for deformation studies online build monitoring and early detection of breast cancer one of the unique applications of dr venkatraman sir is a science and technology knowledge base which has been the successful application of nde methodologies and techniques for art archaeology and in national heritage sir had been instrumental in the development and application of conventional and advanced nd methods based on the radiography and x ray fluorescence for the characterization and the finger painting of ancient south indian bronzes dr venkatraman sir has also made an in depth study into the ancient method of lost wax process used for casting such bronzes the expertise and experience thus gained was successfully applied during the fabrication of the tallest nadraja in the world which was gifted by dae to ce orden in june in june 2004 recently he was part of the investigation team in tamil nadu for identification of fake icons had also been invited by 
the Mysore Palace authorities to investigate the gold leaf paintings and by ASI for evaluation of the colossums of Brahmachari Temple, Tanjore. Dr. Rangar Thaman sir is a recipient of the BAE Homi Baba the Science and Technology Award 2007 for Individual Excellence and the Group Achievement Awards of DAE during 2008, 2009, and 2010. 2011, 2012, 2015, and also 2016. INS Gold Medal 2005 also. So, IN, SAD has received ISNT International Recognition in 2013 and has won more than 10 Best Paper Awards. SAD has been invited to deliver many keynote address, plenary invited talks in national and international seminars, including Asian Pacific Conference or NDT. And Sar was also a distinct scientist at the Fraunhofer Institute of NDT, Sarprakan during 2006-2007. Sar is honorary fellow of the Indian Society for non distributed Testing Fellow, Chennai Academy of Sciences, Executive Board Member, Asian Pacific Federation of NDT, the past President on the 14th Asian Pacific Conference on NDT, the past Chairman, the Quantitative Infrared Thermography, Asian Subcommittee President, Indian Society for non distributed Testing. Sir is presently a distinguished scientist and a director, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakum, the Director General Service Organization, Kalpakum, and also the chairman, the managing director in charge for Bharatiya Nambikya Vidyut Nigam. Sir is also a senior professor in the HPNI and has guided the five students for PhD and is presently guiding three students. Dr. Venkatraman sir has been conferred the degree of a Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in recognition of his outstanding contributions in nuclear science and technology. And also, I once again thank uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we have the what I mean uh, more. Okay, I mean uh, the the research and collaborations. Okay, with you, of course. Uh, at present, okay, I thank you very much, sir, for joining with us in the busy schedule, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you very sir. Much. Thank you, sir. Now I invite our honourable chief guest, Dr. P. Venkatraman, sir, director, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakam, to give the keynote address. Sir, the session is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Uh, distinguished dignitaries online, Dean, Dr. Murli Krishna, Vice Principal, Dr. Prabhakar, Dr. Saravanan, Dr. Jayalakshmi, Dr. Dhanashekaran, Dr. Subramanyam, all the heads of the departments of SRM and then the faculty members and also all the participants for this, I should say, unique faculty development program that has been conceived by the Department of Physics, uh, which to say is very close to my heart. I would just elucidate the reasons for this in the course of my address. But at the outset, I should thank the management of SRM for giving the flexibility and the opportunity to the Department of Physics to organize such a course, which is of immense importance not only to the faculty members who are attending this particular program, but also to organizations like the Department of Atomic Energy or the Department of Space or Defense, where materials and other research areas are of prime, what you call, significance. I hope you are able to hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So let me start by just taking a small example, because today, in the world of research, when I say research, research has many aspects, but we talk about applied research. And when we talk about applied research, it is primarily, I would say, go a step further to say that it is user-defined applied research. The reason is any user-defined research can always produce areas which are of importance and which are of significance at the same time, enhance the fundamental knowledge. If you see the inventions and discoveries world over, historically also, you can see that many of these discoveries have basically been applied research, which have taken a problem, investigated the problem, and then the fundamental sciences have also been developed. To take the classical example of the discovery of X-rays, Ranjan was primarily looking at the X-rays he was looking at some invisible radiation that was emanating from the Crookes tube, which produced the fluorescence at a distance of about one meter on a screen of barium platinum cyanide. And um, then he started investigating. He saw that this particular invisible radiations had excellent properties, which can be used in the medical applications 
so the medical application started immediately then if you see they went on to discover the properties of these radiations the fundamental applications the bragg's laws all these things subsequently came what i would like to emphasize is experimental research and computational research need to go hand in hand if you take a nuclear industry let us take a classical example today we are talking about materials in nuclear industry shielding is a very important issue and we have components we have radiations which should be coming out of the reactor which should be x rays and gamma rays which need to be shielded and when i talk of shielding i need both basically both the high density materials and the low density materials to shield the neutrons and the x rays so devising such a material requires a computational tools and when i talk about the developmental technologies today we talk about nanoparticles so i would like to impregnate my material like concrete with nanoparticles of gadolinium so that i can increase its efficiency for shielding towards gamma rays at the same time i would also like to impregnate nanoparticles of boron so that it increases my shielding ability with respect to neutrons but the percentage of boron and the gadolinium that can be added is a function of many parameters as rightly pointed out by our dean who said that the intercomplexity and the play within the properties is very complex so here the computational tools become very very useful to determine the percentages to determine the composition and to determine ultimately the efficiency of attenuation with respect to x rays and gamma rays now once i design this particular material i need to fabricate it and again validate my computational research methodologies through experimental research so i use what is called as radiometry where again i do a little bit of computational modeling through monte carlo methods to ascertain whether what source i use to determine the activity transmission is appropriate or not so here again computational research plays a role in validating the experimental research and ultimately you validate it so today's world experimental research and computational research go hand in hand and as direct i mean indicated by our dean and on the wide range of applications today this particular area is quite fascinating this particular area is quite developing and today when we talk of artificial intelligence neural networks machine vision all these things etc it gets integrated into the computational research tools also and it helps us to enhance the efficiency of the research and when i talk of this this particular aspect of experimental and computational research is equally important to the faculty members of the educational organizations and academics who are interested in doing good projects in collaboration with the institutions we in the institutions would like to have applied research areas problem areas given to the academic institutions so that viable solutions can be found and in this context if the academic people have a fundamental understanding of the synergistic linkages between both these they can come up with good project proposals which can definitely stand in any committee and then get passed through because a fundamental interplay of these is very important and is always looked for in any sort of what you call objectives and deliverables in a project so in this context let me again congratulate the department of physics for choosing this particular topic which is of immense relevance and importance in the national field of research today and i would like again to congratulate the srm management for their proactive support for these sort of initiatives from igcr side i can definitely say that we would definitely try to be supportive to all these sort of initiatives and in this context though this is a online meet i would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you under the aegis of xrm to have a visit to kalpakam and see the facilities we can have an institution a small request is this is a starter we should say the seven day program which has been coined with expert faculty 
it's just an insight into the various aspects of computational research and experimental research the faculty should take the cue from this and i would request the srm head of the i mean physics department to also see if it is possible to have specialized advanced faculty development programs in each of the areas that come as an outcome of this fdp so that we have a continuing series also and you have a sort of you can say a regular event which all the faculty members across the country and internationally would look for i would like to thank the department of physics dr saravanan dr murli krishna dr prabhakar for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts and once again thanks to one and all and wish this seven day program uh, excel interactions among all of you and a better understanding which can enhance your knowledge which can be applied truthfully for the physics the physical sciences and for societal applications thank you very much thank you sir thank you for this informative speech and motivational speech sir thank you, thank you. so much thank you sir thank you sir now i request dr k subramaniam assistant professor department of physics to propose vote of thanks uh, good morning one and all present here i take uh, i am very much delighted uh, to deliver the vote of thanks is the august uh, uh, occasion on behalf of the management and the Depart department of physics srm sc ramapuram my heartfelt thanks to dr b venkatraman sir director indira gandhi center for atomic research kalpakam for accepting our invitation uh, to be as a chief guest and to deliver the keynote address in this uh, fdp program so in his busy schedule uh, my sincere thanks to our beloved chairman chief director director dean ent vice principal academic vice principal admin sir uh, srm ast ramapuram campus for their constant support to organize this fdp program my sincere Uh, thanks to all the participants who uh, actively participate in the one week ftp program uh, thank you for uh, participating in this thank you very much kindly stay with us the next session will begin shortly please stay with us thank you sir dear participants our first session starts now now i request dr k subramaniam sir assistant professor department of physics to introduce our first speaker dr m s manirajan sir assistant professor department of physics university college of engineering anna university ramnadapuram sir uh, good morning uh, i i uh, i take the immense uh, pleasure in introducing uh, dr m s manirajan sir dr m s manirajan sir has received his undergraduate degree bsc physics from vivekananda college tiruvedagam madurai district and uh, received the postgraduate msc degree from madurai kamraj university he received mphil from baridas university he did his phd in the field of optical solid and based uh, fiber optic communication from college of engineering anna university chennai he has published over 75 papers in the field of solid and based optical fiber communication system and photonic crystal fiber based uh, optical sensors in highly reputed international journals and he has published around 25 papers in various international conferences he is a life member of indian physics association life member in the indian laser association uh, in the life member in the optical society of india life member in the material research society of india and photonic society of india he is currently working as assistant professor in department of physics anna university university college of engineering ramnadapuram tamil nadu his research area includes solid on propagation in various nonlinear waveguides photonic crystal fibers for various sensing applications and erbium doped fiber amplifiers he also served as a reviewer of several reputed international journals uh, journal of the modern optics IEEE Photonics, Nonlinear Dynamics, Springer, Optic uh, Optics Communication, Elsevier uh, Publication, Journal of the Modern Physics Letters, B, Optic 
communication and theoretical physics iop he received many funded projects uh, for the international research collaboration from serb department of science and technology also he is having the research collaboration in uh, malaysia uae singapore and south africa so we, i am very much delighted in meeting you sir so now i hand over the session to you please take the session sir thank you sir oh uh, yeah thank you thank you very much for your uh, introduction so i should thank uh, to the department of physics srm institute of science and technology for this wonderful opportunity so now i would like to start my talk Are the slide visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please make it as a full screen, sir. The slide is visible, sir. Please make it as a full screen. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Now, now it is okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the actually the nonlinear uh, dynamics is a big ocean. This area is big ocean. This container contains a uh, variety of uh, areas like nonlinear fiber optic and Bose-Einstein condensation and plasma physics and um, hydrodynamics and oceanography. Like this. so, the various fields are related to the nonlinear dynamics. The especially the nonlinearity cannot be ignored in our uh, daily life as well as in the uh, applied research. not only in theoretical approach but also in uh, experimental observation we could not ignore the nonlinearity in various situation or various uh, circumstances so in this talk we have to uh, discuss about the uh, role of computation in to understand the uh, various nonlinear optical phenomena especially in the fiber optics uh, so i already told it uh, it covers various area but especially today we have to discuss about the fiber optics so with the uh, assistance of the mathematical uh, formula or mathematical derivations and without uh, consideration of the computer science we could not achieve the computational uh, physics because we uh, we cannot understand the physical phenomena without the supporting of mathematics and uh, computer science to understand the experimental as well as to uh, produce the new theories new uh, theoretical concept in various field so we should learn about the computational physics so uh, here in this talk we have to uh, learn about the some uh, e some important equations related to the nonlinear uh, fiber optics which is one of the uh, Uh, area thrust area in the field of nonlinear dynamics so uh, the, there are two main equation there are the variety of nonlinear equations are there in the nonlinear dynamics but in the case of optical fiber there are uh, i consider only the two equations so one is called uh, nonlinear schrodinger equation Optical solid and propagation in the erbium doped fiber amplifier. So both are we can <coughs> connect to the nonlinear dynamics because in these two uh, problems, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation is basic basically required to deal with the optical pulse propagation in the various circumstances. One is called the optical fiber, another one is called the optical fiber amplifier. so here there are uh, two methods uh, i employ one is called the lax pair and the second one is called darboss transformation the lax pair is uh, i have to discuss the various uh, equations not only these two equations the derived uh, part of this equation is we have to discuss so the various coupled equations and uh, nls mb equations and single mode fiber equations so the variety of uh, nonlinear schrodinger equations are there for the uh, various applications so when is the wdm applications we can use the coupled mode or coupled uh, equations coupled nls equations 
and uh, in the case of uh, three core multi core fiber we can uh, we can use or we can consider the uh, coupled equations so in the case of uh, airplane block of fiber amplifier as i already told the non linear schrodinger equation with the maxwell block system can be considered in all these equations i i prefer the darbox transformation which is based on the construct of lex per through the aks formalism so from the darbox transformation we can generate or we can calculate the various uh, solid term solutions we can generate a number of solid term solutions so in my case i especially uh, demonstrate through the computational techniques i demonstrate three solid term solutions so first i consider the three coupled nls equation here this means that this equation can be applicable for the multi core optical fiber so you have especially three core fiber otherwise it can be applicable for the uh, wdm system that is called wavelength division multiplex uh, system so we through the uh, computer simulation work we can understand the solid term propagation in the wavelength division multiplexing system as well as the three core optical fiber in this equation the beta of ej is represent the group velocity dispersion which is actually the negative effect in the optical fiber communication system but it becomes a positive effect when the solid term formation in the optical fiber and the gamma of ej is the non linear parameter in the optical fiber so these three the q1 q2 q3 is represent the three component of the input optical field in the optical fiber so we can uh, apply this uh, equations to both cases for the three core optical fiber or wavelength division multiplexing system so here uh, by applying the darbox transformation technique we derive the uh, two solid term solution by using the computer simulation and through the computational technique especially the by using the mathematica here i demonstrate the non linear tunneling so the application of the non linear tunneling is to uh, achieve the pulse compression i will show later in the upcoming slides so we can achieving the by properly tuning the or by properly tailoring the dispersion profile and the non linear profile in the optical fiber we can we can uh, achieve the pulse compression we can achieving the pulse compression for the better achieve better enhancement of the uh, communication system because the pulse compression is the essential technique or uh, essential for the optical fiber communication system so here i achieving the pulse compression through the non linear tunneling uh, method so here you can clearly see the pulse compression along the optical circuit propagation the especially we can get the pulse compression through the non linear and the dispersion barrier so in your case uh, the dispersion barrier bit of ej is we can uh, select the barrier location by selecting the parameter ej not so the ej not is the barrier location uh, in the optical fiber communication system so here we uh, represent the ej not equal to 3 so this means that See when the solid term propagated through the optical fiber, till reach the uh, dispersion barrier, J not equal to three. There is no any uh, changes in the uh, pulse width. So after crossing the barrier, the phase shift also there as well as the pulse compressed in the effective manner. So it shows that we can select the location of the compression. Where we need compression because because of the uh, dispersion, the pulse will grow get the warning. So after long propagation distance, the every pulse will get the dispersion because of the group velocity dispersion. The group velocity dispersion arises due to the uh, not uh, not purely a uh, not purely <coughs> monochromatic nature of the laser light. so due to the uh, non non monochromatic nature of the laser because it is not a purely monochromatic it is a highly monochromatic laser pulse so because of this we can observe the 
group elastic dispersion in the optical fiber. So due to the group elastic dispersion, the pulse will get the broadening. When the multiple pulse propagate through the optical fiber, definitely at a particular distance or certain distance, we can <coughs> observe the overlapping of the pulse. So due to the overlapping of the pulse, the crosstalk will be occur. So to avoid the crosstalk in the multi-channel propagation system, we should compress the pulse at a particular distance because around it may take, uh, depends upon the uh, pulse parameter, depends upon the fiber parameter, the compression factor will be different. So we could not say exactly <coughs> the uh, dispersion factor it will depends upon the input uh, optical pulse parameter as well as fiber parameters. So, it depends upon these two parameters, we can calculate the dispersion value. So, to reduce the dispersion, we have to use some uh, compression technique. Various compressing techniques are there. We can, uh, the practical technique, we can use some prism for the optical compression. Some optical compressor is also there. And some type of grating also we can employ to compress the optical pulse. So, in the case of uh, uh, nonlinear tunneling, here we are using some uh, potential barrier through the inhomogeneity in nature. We can compress the pulse here. So, this is the great achievement. And, the, and this slide shows the cascade compressor. So, if we need the efficient uh, the temperature, the efficient compression or the efficient uh, compression factor, so we can send the optical soliton through multiple barrier or multiple well, the dispersion barrier or nonlinear barrier. In this case of uh, this uh, another case, we select the dispersion barrier for the studies. So here you can see the multiple barriers are there. One is at around uh, 2.5, another one is around the 5. So there are two multiple barriers along the propagation. So therefore, when we compare with the previous slide, here we can see that the uh, pulse is compressed in the efficient way. So we can get the well-compressed optical pulse by sending through the multiple potential barrier or dispersion barrier as shown in the figure. So thus we can achieving the uh, pulse compression in the efficient way. The another uh, model, which is uh, entirely different from the previous uh, case. This case two here, we consider the optical fiber with the tapper. So here, what is the tapper? Here is the uh, tap, a fourth time is represent the tappering tap. The FRPZ is represent the tappering. So here the tappering means the diameter of the uh, a core medium is gradually decreased. So when the diameter of the core medium is gradually decreased, the dispersion is entirely affected. So we can changing the dispersion of the optical fiber medium by reducing the diameter of the core medium. So here we adopt the FRPZ, we include in the nonlinear Schrodinger equation because of to investigate the tapering fiber. So the when the optical silicon propagate through the tapering fiber, here also it is another method to compress it. So in the previous case, we adopt the technique called nonlinear tunneling. By the introducing the inhomogeneities in the optical fiber, there we achieve the uh, pulse compression. But in the case of uh, second case, we achieve the pulse compression as well as amplification as shown in the figure. So in the three-dimensional wave, so you can clearly observe the, the silicon compression as well as amplification. In the case of two silicon, here you can clearly see the along the propagation distance <coughs> without any barrier here I introduced, but the silicon got amplified. At the same time, the pulse width is significantly reduced along the propagation distance. <coughs> So here, pulse compression is achieved by reducing the, the core diameter along the optical fiber, which is called tapered fiber. So by employing the tapered fiber, we can achieve it. So which means that another uh, name of the tapered fiber is called dispersion decreasing fiber. It is called DDM. 
So there are a variety of fibers at that. Dispersion shifted by bar DSF and dispersion compensation fiber DCF. So likewise here, which is called DDF, that is called the dispersion decreasing fiber. So here the dispersion is decreased along the optical pore medium by changing the radius of the or diameter of the pore medium. So by this, when the light propagates through the reduced pore medium, reduced the diameter of the pore medium, the pulse gets the compression as well as gets the amplification. And also, we can uh, control the interaction in the optical soliton system, so which are supported by the computational methods or computational techniques. So, which is the major part in the today talk. Because without the computational method or the computational technique, it is not possible. So, we can derive the, uh, we can select the, or we can consider the equation, where is nonlinear equation, and we can adopt some analytical technique to derive the Sultan solution. But it can be re easily realized before the uh, experimental observation by the, by means of optical computational work or computational techniques. So here we can demonstrate the soliton interaction in the, which is called periodic interaction, because there is no uh, uh, single kind of interaction between two solitons. The soliton is actually, the periodically interaction is occur. So by, uh, by this figure, we can conclude that the soliton interaction also very important. But in the but in the case of a nonlinear optical fiber communication system, the interactions must be avoided. But in the case of a soliton switching characteristics, the soliton interaction is essential. So we will uh, see in the upcoming slide about the soliton switching characteristics. So we can observe. So the soliton interaction is important in the case of soliton switching, but in general the soliton interaction must be avoided in the optical fiber communication system, but in both can be controlled. Soliton interaction can be controlled and there are uh, two different types of interactions are there. One is called uh, uh, elastic collision, another one is called inelastic collision. But in the case of uh, this situation, we can show that the interaction is elastic, not inelastic, because of, after the every collision, there is no change in the uh, amplitude of the pulse. And another model, which is called coupled inhomogeneous uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation with the Maxwell block system. When I introduce the system, the five region sphere is the major role. Because of the five region sphere, I introduce coupled system. And also, this equation represents the Femtosecond optical soliton propagation in the optical fiber. In the single uh, mode fiber, we can uh, select a single equation. It is not a uh, not require the coupled equation. But in the case of fiber gens, we should introduce or we should consider the coupled equations here. At the same time, this equation is coupled with the Maxwell block system. So the Maxwell block system is represent the ergium doppler fiber. So the ergium doppler fiber is can be used to uh, for the amplification purpose. So already I told there are variety of uh, uh, techniques are there for the pulse compression as well as pulse amplification. So here the most of the net optical network areas are uh, utilized the ergium doppler fiber amplifier, which is shortly called as ERPA. So that kind of amplifiers are uh, currently available and used by the various optical networks like Airtel, uh, BSNL, and some other uh, superior networks. So here, this is the coupled equation. And also you can see this is a single equation. Actually, this is a coupled version, but actually the single equation. So it is not very um, easy to understand and, it is, and also it is not very easy to solve. But the, the solving of this equation is um, possible only by means of uh, computational techniques. Again, here I 
uh, employing the Darbox transformation technique to derive the silicon solution. Here the two silicon solution I derive. As I already told, this is femtosecond optical silicon. So here the optical silicon propagation. So here you can clearly see the input pulse two pulses are having the low amplitude. But after the uh, crossing the uh, location barrier number four, Z not equal to four. I selected in the for the computational work. So after crossing the potential barrier, the two solitons are uh, get well amplified. So you can clearly see that. And also in this uh, situation, I achieved some uh, soliton switching characteristics. So here the input uh, pulse one is called low amplitude soliton pulse, which is maybe considered as zero. The another input pulse is considered as one. So when two different amplitude pulses are input to the optical fiber, at the location is it not equal to four, we got two output pulse. So the input is called zero and one, the output called one and one. So we can construct some logical devices by using the optical soliton for the ultra fast switching. So we cannot imagine uh, by using the electronic switching. So it is a, in the, when we compare with the electronic switching, the optical switching got the ultra high speed switching. So therefore here I achieving the switching characteristics by doping of the APA matrix. So when we changing the doping concept, that is the basic difference between the, the previous slide and the, this one. So in both slides, you can observe that the barrier location is same. In both cases, is it not equal to four? So is it not means there is a barrier location where we can easily select it. So where we require the switching characteristics of the optical soliton, we can select the barrier location, whether we want is it not equal to four or two or six or 10, whatever may be. So we can select any location for the switching characteristics. So where we can get the, where we need the switching characteristics, we can add more LBM atoms along the optical fiber. So this is the basic difference between the uh, current slide and the previous slide. So the doping concentration when we increasing, not only we got the amplification of the optical soliton, as well as I observe the switching characteristics like in the slide number 50. So here I observe the switching characteristics. And the another model uh, which is called uh, the autosecond pulse propagation. So here we compare three different pulse width. So one is called picosecond optical soliton propagation and another one is called femtosecond alternate propagation and finally the femtosecond. So uh, picosecond, femtosecond and autosecond. So picosecond means 10 power minus 12 second uh, pulse width and the case of uh, femtosecond pulse propagation the pulse width is 10 power minus 15 and in the case of autosecond the 10 power minus 18. So there is the uh, difference between the uh, pico, femto and autosecond. So why we need the auto second pulse? This is the uh, highest uh, currently the observed auto second pulse propagation. So here the when we uh, when we send the auto second pulse propagation through the optical fiber, there are various higher order uh, linear effect and as well as higher order nonlinear effects will be included. In the case of uh, when we consider this equation, you can clearly see that uh, when we D two the third equation, so actually these are coupled equation, where the D2 equal to E triple T. So E triple T means that third order dispersion. In the D1, you can observe that the second order dispersion. In the D3, you can observe that the fourth order dispersion, E, T, 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 T. So this means that dou square E by dou T power 4. So this is called fourth order dispersion. In a similar way, you can consider the D4 equal to the fifth order dispersion also there. And D5, you can see that sixth order dispersion. So this means that we cannot observe the higher order dispersion effect when the uh, picosecond pulse propagated through the optical fiber. So when we uh, consider the optical uh, silicon pro problem in the regime of a picosecond, 
we could not talk about the higher order dispersion as well as higher order nonlinear effect because the dispersion is a linear effect the self phase modulation and the self stiffening and some the quintic uh, effect and the septic effects are called higher order nonlinear effect so we could not observe this kind of a uh, higher order dispersion and higher order nonlinear effects in the case of picosecond in the femtosecond soliton propagation we can uh, observe the uh, dispersion up to the fourth order dispersion when the attosecond pulse propagated through the optical fiber we can observe a greater than fourth order dispersion like fifth order dispersion sixth order dispersion seventh order dispersion eighth order dispersion like that so this equation represent the Auto second pulse prog propagation in the inhomogeneous optical fiber. So the inhomogeneous optical fiber means that the optical uh, medium, the lattice parameters are not constant for a long distance, as well as the uh, diameter or radius of the core is not constant for the long distance. But because in the case of optical fiber communication system, we can consider the in in terms of thousand kilometer or two thousand kilometer distance, so it is not a short distance communication system. So when we consider a long distance communication system or long haul communication or optical network, we should employ the optical fiber in the, in the order of thousand. So when we uh, when we employ the thousand kilometer optical fiber, we could not expect the uh, uh, diameter or radius of the optical core medium is not constant. So, which means that inhomogeneous in nature. So, whenever we uh, discuss about the real optical fiber case, we should not avoid the variable coefficient. So, instead of uh, variable coefficient, we can use constant coefficients. But when we use the constant coefficients instead of uh, variable coefficients, in the case of uh, the current slide, you can see the alpha uh, fidget, beta fidget, gamma fidget, phi of fidget. D of fidget, R of fidget. So these are called variable coefficients. So uh, especially these parameters are varying with respect to eject. So here eject means the propagation distance. So the pro according to the propagation distance, these parameters are varying. So which means the inhomogeneous. In the case of ideal fiber, these parameters or these coefficients can be considered as constant, which call which may be called as constant coefficients. But in the real case or in the real optical fiber communication system, we cannot consider this parameter as constant. Therefore, this equation is indicates or implies that the real optical fiber communication system, and here also I employ the lax pair to construct the Darbar transformation to derive the soliton solution. From the soliton solution, we can uh, discuss various type of soliton control or soliton management system because the here the soliton control or soliton management means that we can control the dispersion uh, as I already told we can get the various type of optical fiber through uh, controlling or through tailoring the dispersion profile of the optical fiber so such like the dispersion decreasing fiber and dispersion compensating fiber dispersion shifted fiber dispersion managed fiber so we can changing the dispersion domain by properly selecting the dispersion profile. So based on the dispersion profile, the pulse will get affected when it propagates through the optical fiber. So here we consider the autosecond soliton propagation in optical fiber. So because of the autosecond soliton propagation in the optical fiber, various nonlinear effects and various linear effects are uh, takes place. So here, uh, I derive the three soliton uh, solution by applying the Darbar transformation technique. Here, this is the solution is too complicated. So here you can see this is the single solution for the three soliton solution. This is the single equation for the E three represent the, uh, the three soliton solution. If we ready, if we got four soliton solution, it becomes as E power four. So the solution is too complicated because of the system also very complicated, which you can see in the previous slide. Because of the higher order nonlinear effect and higher order 
linear apex also uh, included in the optical fiber. And one more thing is by uh, properly selecting the uh, dispersion and nonlinear profile, we can understand some experimental uh, behavior or experimental nature of the optical solid form in the various type of optical fiber. So we can clearly or we can easily understand the optical solid form propagation uh, by using the computational methods. For example, here. I select these two profiles instead of a dispersion and nonlinearity. As I already told, in the auto second pulse propagation equation, the master equation, DRPZ represents the GVD group velocity dispersion, and RRPZ represents the nonlinearity parameter. So then this profile included in the optical solid and solution after getting from the Darbar's transformation, we can control the these two profile the dispersion because both are arbitrary functions uh, arbitrary functions therefore we can select any kind of profiles so the exponential profile or periodic profile or some other kind of profiles profile we can select to to, to realize the problem the solve so by using the computational technique without uh, need of the any experimental setup we can check the solution. We can check the solution. We can understand the solution. We can get the physical significance. We can get the physical significance of the obtained solution by giving the profile through the DR feature and RR feature. Not only DR feature RR feature, some other inhomogeneous profile also can be manipulated by giving some uh, profiles. So here, an example, there is a periodic profile is uh, employed for the obtained solid form solution. So by using this kind of uh, studies, we can, uh, we can uh, achieve various applications based on the optical solid term pulses. So first one is optical compression, which is already we discussed, and pulse amplification, this also already discussed, pulse amplification, and the phase shift control. So the phase shift control means when the solid term propagate through the ideal fiber, we cannot achieving the phase shift. But in the case of uh, inhomogeneous fiber, by, by properly selecting the uh, GVD profile and the nonlinear uh, profile, we can achieving the phase shift control. So it, can, it will be applica applicable for the path control devices. So we can control the path of the optical pulse by controlling the GVD parameter and the nonlinearity. And the, another one example is the soliton interaction. So we can change the amplitude of the soliton and the phase of velocity of the soliton. And apart from the amplitude and velocity, we can control the soliton interaction through the uh, GVD profile and the nonlinear profile. And the last one is called optical switches, which is already I explained in the through various process through the nonlinear uh, phenomena or nonlinear applications. Nonlinear applications, the optical switches can be constructed by the various nonlinear couplers or uh, through optical solid and interaction or through optical nonlinear tunneling phenomena. So, there are various, various methods to achieve the optical switches. Because of uh, the reason is behind the optical switches, the achievement of optical switches to achieve the ultra fast switching devices. So, here you can um, see that. The three soliton propagation through the various interaction. So by properly manipulating the values, the amplitude uh, mu one, mu two, mu three, and velocity eta one, eta two, eta three of the corresponding uh, velocity of the three solitons. So by controlling or by varying the uh, constant value of parameters which are present in the three soliton solution, we can control the soliton interaction here which is called the periodic amplification so here you can clearly see that at the initially at EZ equal to zero the amplitude of the soliton is very low but when the EZ greater than 15 the propagation distance you can clear, clearly see that the amplification is significantly takes place along the propagation distance in this case the amplification is achieved without periodic behavior 
so both are having the different applications the periodic amplification can be realized in the experimental setup by periodically inserting the optical amplifiers along the optical fiber communication network so periodic amplification means that we can insert the amplifier periodically along the long haul communication system so here the non periodic amplification so here you can uh, see that the without periodic oscillation of the solitons these are three solitons are getting the amplification um, among three soliton system the two uh, two solitons are having the uh, significant phase shift so the, the phase shift also controllable the amplification also controllable pulse width also controllable by controlling the dispersion and the non linear parameter because of this this kind of solitons are called as dispersion non non linearity management solitons dnms dispersion non linearity management solitons because these two parameters are Uh, can be easily managed in the real optical fiber communication system so we can get whatever we need when we whenever we need amplification we can get through the uh, through the manipulation of dispersion and uh, non linear profile when we getting the uh, dispersion decreasing that is pulse compression we can achieve it. so we can achieving solid and interaction we can achieving phase shift which is uh, can be used for the path controlling device and we can achieving the optical solid and amplification so whatever we need we can we can getting through the properly manipulation of the dispersion and the non linearity profile so this is the this are the uh, conclusion as i already told by changing the concentration of the lbm atoms in the optical fiber we can control the optical soliton devices so soliton fiber also available solid and laser also available in the market depends upon the controlling parameter and high non linearity fiber we can achieving some superconducting generation so you will you may get another uh, talk based on the superconducting generation by using the photonic crystal fiber by the uh, one of my friend uh, mohit sharma will deliver the lecture on the superconducting generation the, which is one of the application of the optical soliton so the superconducting light source is nothing but a tunable laser source so all are can be uh, understand through the process of the computational technique so after tuning the values through, through the computational technique we can adopt this parameter value directly to the experimental setup so we can easily getting the tuned result and also we can compare the result with the theoretical one and the numerical one and with the through the computational technique which is the uh, main focus of this today talk so the through the changing the doping concentration the erbium doped fiber characteristics can be attained and soliton phase can be controlled in the desirable manner which is very important so okay whatever we need we can control the optical pulses and the optical amplification devices and uh, soliton controlling devices and through inelastic collision we can uh, we can construct the optical soliton switches by by properly selecting the soliton control parameters and these are some uh, references related to the my topics my talk and thank you so any queries thank you mani rajan sir for your wonderful yes, thank talk thank you sir very thank nice talk sir so audience uh, if you have any query or if you want to discuss with uh, a resource person please raise your hand uh, i will unmute and uh, you can talk with the uh, resource person uh, participants you can interact with the dr manirajan sir uh, and you can raise your queries Uh, participants, you can uh, raise your hands 
price and option and now you can unmute yourself ah yeah ah ma'am sir Uh, one, one. Uh, sir? Yes, yes, yes. yes, you can interact. Uh, sir. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, sir, uh, welcome, sir. Empire Mohan, right? Uh. Uh, sir, if a normal wave, uh, wave equation is solved, the solution is trigonometric. But solid ground solution is a secant hyperbolic function. What is the difference? Ah, please sir. Uh, Manirajan sir. Ah, yes. Ah, yes sir, yes sir, you can add it. Sir, so this is nothing but a representation only. There is no any difference. You can, the trigonometric function can be expressed in terms of exponential as well as hyperbolic function. Actually, the secant which means that we can derive the secant which form of solution from the exponential form only. So you can use the exponential form as well as. So there is no any basic difference. There is a format of the solution only the difference. But the characteristics are same. We can we can use the uh, representation of the sequence space in terms of exponential function. Only for simplification. Oh. Actually, oh. the sequence form of solution is derived from the exponential form. Only. So the exponential form also can be represented in terms of trigonometric, in terms of sine theta, cos theta, like that. So we can uh, we can represent in the uh, many. Uh, okay, sir. thank you, sir. Other participants, please unmute yourself. Uh, good afternoon. Any? Uh, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon. Oh, yes. uh, sir, uh, can you tell me how do you write the Schrodinger equations for three solitons, two solitons, and system? Sir, your voice not audible, sir. Please repeat. So, uh, sir, I write it in the chat box. Uh, Mr. Yes. Srinivasan, uh, please ask if your voice is not clear, he is saying. Yeah, not clear. Mr. Srinivasan, we can ask. Hello, Mr. Sinivasan. Sir, you can ask the question. Your he, he left, sir. He clear. left. He left. He left. I, I, I heard something from him, sir, Manirajan, sir. He asked how to put the three sultan solution, two sultan solution. How to put or how to generate? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How to generate uh, that uh, three sultan and two sultan? Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, he came back. By applying the Darboz transformation technique, we can generate up to n number of silicon solution. Depends upon the consider equation because we can use single equation or coupled equation or NLS MB equation or higher order NLS equation or higher order NLS equation with variable coefficients because there are various kind of uh, various types of nonlinear Schrodinger equations are there to reveal the various physical situation. So depends upon the uh, problem, consider by us, we can select the equation and we can select the method to generate the soliton solution. If you need, you can generate four number of soliton solution. It doesn't matter. But if the solution will be more complicated, not easy one. But it is possible by using the uh, various analytical technique and it is possible by the computational methods. Uh, Panirajan, sir. Uh, please, uh, yes. uh, uh, please look your chat box. Uh, Dr. Pankaj Kumar asked one question. Linear algebra AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero. Uh, graph real number is uh, consistent. Uh, substitution elimination cross. Where I can access it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, how, how do you write strategy <laughs> equation? He asked. Uh, Dr. Pankaj Kumar, your question is not clear. Uh, I have seen in the chat box. Oh. Okay. Uh, you can unmute uh, Dr. Panchkach Kumar, sir. You can ask. 
manirajan sir, Hi, yes, sir. How, how do you write schrodinger equation this is a question from uh, mr srinivasan again the schrodinger equation can be derived from the fundamental maxwell equations depends upon your medium you can put some uh, initial value condition to the maxwell equation from the maxwell equation you can derive the schrodinger equation okay very basic very basic you can derive the all uh, wave propagation equation from the maxwell equation only the electromagnetic wave propagation in various media can be derived from the maxwell equation because for for example in the case of optical fiber it is a dielectric media it is a non conducting media so based on because of this reason you can put the value of conductivity this equal to zero in the maxwell equation so by this depends upon the nature of the medium you can put the values in the maxwell equation then finally you can derive the schrodinger equation from the maxwell equation so the maxwell equation is very very important sir uh, in the solid town vande communication ku use pandranga illa sir idu practical angle implement pannirukanga sir pannirukanga even recent ah kuda vande japan la kuda vande adu achieve pannirukanga high speed ku achieve pannirukanga oh japan la achieve india la india la varadhukku vaippu irukku sir communication ku enna use pannuvanga but vande solid town vande solid town lasers they are using Oh, all the lasers are available in the uh, market. Bangalore, la Bangalore, la available are the all the lasers. Uh, Mani sir, uh, Guhan is asking a question. Yes, sir. I think by performing Darbox transformation for one salt and solution, yes, we can get mostly second H solution. Yes. Why we are achieving second H hyperbolic function? What about other hyperbolic functions? Sir? No, no. Actually, uh, the soliton solution. I mean, there are two type of solitons are there: the bright soliton and the dark soliton. The bright soliton is uh, nothing but second gauge soliton. In the dark soliton, it's nothing but in the mathematically it is called second gauge soliton. So, depends upon the regime we selected in the dispersion of the optical fiber, the solution will be different. If you want to. generate the dark soliton solution if you want to generate the dark soliton solution the sign of the gvd will be changed the group plus the dispersion will be sign of the gvd will be changed from the dispersion uh, regime of the optical fiber you can observe that there are two different regime one is called the normal dispersion regime another one is called the anomalous dispersion regime so in between that you can see that the zero dispersion wavelength which is called lambda equal to 1.33 micrometer so the greater than 1.33 micrometer is called anomalous dispersion regime less than 1.33 micrometer is called normal dispersion regime so in these two different regime the characteristics of the pulse will be changed therefore in the normal dispersion regime we got dark soliton the mathematically it is called tangent pulse on the other hand in the anomalous dispersion regime we got break soliton which is mathematically is called second gauge form so you may got either any of one depends upon the considered equation you can derive the dark soliton by the gv by changing the sign of the gvd in the schrodinger equation So the second gauge tan gauge only depends upon the regime of the optical fiber, whether it is uh, in the uh, normal uh, regime or uh, in the anomalous regime. That's all. There is no any mechanism behind this. Uh, sir, one more question from Mr. Xavier Suresh. What is the role of uh, refractive indices in the salt and propagation in fibers? What is the role of refractive? Indi index in solid and propagation in fibers. Ah. The refractive uh, index is uh, basically in the case of non-linear medium. That is depends upon not only the optical solid term, any uh, any optical uh, pulses. It is the uh, dynamics of the optical pulse uh, changing with respect to the uh, refractive index profile of the medium. 
So it may be the optical fiber medium. There is various diffractive index profiles are there. Graded index profile, step index profile, parabolic index profile. So there are various diffractive index profile are there. It is depends upon the considered medium. Considered medium here means the optical fiber. So depends upon the uh, refractive index profile. The dynamics will be changed. Dynamics of the soliton. So there is no any uh, uh, the refractive index value corresponding to the soliton. It is corresponding to the medium. So depends upon the refractive index of the medium. The input pulse will be changed. The dynamics will be changed. Uh, sir, uh, how many different kind of solitons are possible in photonic crystal? Photonic crystal or photonic crystal fiber or fiber? Because these three are different. Photonic fiber, sir. Photonic fiber or photonic crystal fiber? Because uh, I today I have discussed only about the conventional optical fiber, not about photonic crystal fibers. So there are variety of uh, solitons are general. Basically, we can observe the spatial oh. uh, spatial soliton, temporal soliton, spatial temporal soliton, topological soliton, and soliton bullets. We can observe king soliton, similar things. So this is for another form of soliton. That's all. Sir, in the Hirota bilinear method, is from the end. I mean, both integrable to non-integrable to is called. I mean, that integrable part is applicable, sir. We can we can use integrable as well as non-integrable. Oh. Okay. But we can we can get this some condition for the integrable. That's all. We can use the any method. Not only the Hirota bilinear. We can use Bagland transformation or Otto Bagland transformation, Darboux transformation, generalized. Darboux transformation. Some other methods are also available. Okay. okay, but we will get here some condition for the integrable. This equation, is, however, the equation is generally non-integrable. The homogeneous equations are non-integrable. In my slides, you can see various type of uh, non-linear Schrödinger equation. All the equations are non-integrable equations. But this equation is integrable under certain condition. So the condition you can obtain through the Uh, Lagster method and fine leaf analysis and the dark box method and some other analytical methods. So you will get condition. This equation is inter. This equation is generally non-integrable, but this equation is integrable under certain condition. Uh, sir, in the stability analysis, for the most of the eigen value, that uh, that important part of the thing is that sir. Correct. Really? Instability. Stability analysis. Analysis for knowing, sir. Modulus instability. Ah, yes, sir. Adal onda ande eigen value onda important na consider kung paano diya. Edna, sir. Because adal onda ngano may na pandra ng dina. We can uh, select the eigen value and we can give the perturbation through the eigen value. And the perturbation oh. plus sir din solo kung the phase la kung kung diya perturbation amplitude perturbation onda niya adal onda kung tiy. Oh. So therefore, the eigen value is very important. So if in the eigen value, we have to give some perturbation to analyze the instability of the soliton pulse. So that is called modulation instability. Okay. The mechanism is only very simple. So you you have to give some perturbation to the system, perturbation to the pulse to study the stability of the pulse, where the soliton can be generate. Or where can be where soliton can be formed where it is not possible. So that is we can get the through the modulation stability gain. Ah, uh, Mani sir, Kausalya, Somalia, Kalua, ask the question. Yes. Is this work possible with the Gaussian software? Gaussian, Gaussian software. Oh, I don't know exactly because I am uh, never of. Gaussian software, but if you generate the soliton solution, then you can directly because the same solution can be uh, realized by the MATLAB also. Mm. So, but here I use only the MATLAB software. So, this can be done. Uh, please, other participants, please uh, mute yourself because too much of noise is coming. Mr. Mondraj, uh, okay, yeah. Yes, professor. You can proceed.
hello dr mani mani sir your your voice is not audible yes 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 uh, yeah, yeah 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 now it is audible ah uh, some internet problem yes sir tell me any other question ah uh, yeah any other question participants <laughs> sir finally uh, gap solid on solving link sir uh, yes yes Uh, that kind of serotonin uh, may be absorbed in the fiber gap getting it will be oh it is not absorbed in the optical fiber so the gap serotonin can be absorbed in the fiber gap getting it will be dr mani sir yes. you can uh, you can share your uh, email id because many questions are here so the participants okay. can they can mail what the what are the queries uh, to you hello okay sir ha uh, i i will share uh, pa participants i will share the manirajan sir's uh, mail id in the oh, chat yes. box yes so you they, they you can mail and brinda veer veerappan uh, madam the the she asked one more question yes uh, what are the softwares uh, have you been used for nld uh, any any free softwares are available they she is asking Brinda Virapan. This software is you can download and install for the trial version. Uh, for example, Mathematica, you can uh, use till for one month. By using some other mail ID, then again you can you have to install. Then you can use trial version. And uh, somebody else are using uh, a buyer trial also. So the cost of the Mathematica around four lakhs. Yeah, for beginner math math lab is uh, uh, I think uh, beginner can, can use support. the ah uh, be beginner can use the trial version. Ah, uh, trial version you can use. Ah, uh, uh, one month one month or two months a trial version. One month one month after one month trial version it will be expired and you yeah. can again you can uh, renewal by using some other mail id. The same mail id cannot use again. Okay. So. Any other question? If you have any doubts, you uh, please contact me. Don't hesitate. I I will share. Can I share, sir? Ah oh, yes, sir. No problem, sir. You can you can give my ah. email ID or my phone number. No problem. Okay. If they any have any doubt, they can ask through WhatsApp also. Your your mail is Sindhil Manirajan OFC at Gmail. At Gmail dot com. Yeah, that is my personal mail ID. This is in the slide I have shown uh, yeah, yeah, official yeah. mail. Yeah, in the slide also, sir has shared official email ID. I also shared the mail ID, and also the feedback link also I have posted. If they have doubt, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Don't hesitate to ask. Oh, okay. If there is no question, uh, then I would like. I am uh, very much thankful uh, because of the management and because of the Department of Physics, uh, Sir Ramesh Chiramabram Campus, uh, for Dr. Mani Rajan Sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, San Jose University. University College of Engineering Ramnath for giving a wonderful talk on the uh, the role of computation nonlinear dynamics. So very he this this is scheduled. Uh, he uh, spared the time with us. So really very much uh, thankful to you, sir, for uh, for your patient answering. Also, I am very much thankful. Okay. So thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. And thank you, sir. Participants, thank you. you can find uh, the feedback link in the chat box, and then uh, you can uh, uh, give your feedback. Uh, thank you, Professor Maria Jain sir, uh, for thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Talk and, thank uh, you. Answer the uh, participant queries. Thank you, thank you, Randa sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Here, participants, feedback link has been posted in the chat box. You can fill it. Sir, shall I leave? Ah, uh, yes, Mani sir, you can leave, sir. Uh, you yes, can leave, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you. Ah, uh, Vijay, ma'am, please inform about uh, tomorrow session. Ah, uh, dear participants, the next session will be by tomorrow. 
three to four. I request everybody to join us at two thirty itself. Uh, participants, those who are listening in uh, the lecture in the YouTube, also I have shared the link, feedback link in the YouTube also. So nearly forty uh, participants are uh, have joined in the YouTube. So you can give your feedback from the YouTube YouTube uh, chat box also.